Hi guys. Thanks again for joining for Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Al DeCoscos. We are here interviewing Malia. I can't wait to hear the stories. I can't wait to hear about the history. I mean, this is going to be exciting. I even have my gloves on, ready to go at it with her, except I need one just in case, because you know, I got to learn to cover her up. And in this way, I don't get hurt as much. So again, let me introduce Sipu Aldacascas, who will introduce Malia, the interviewee. Okay, again, thank you very much. Again, folks, get your notes, notepad ready, get your pens ready, write down all the gold nuggets that you'll hear, because I'm sure through their life experiences, you will actually learn something that you can apply to everyday living. So again, thank you very much, guys, for joining in. Sifu, well, it's all on you. Hey, aloha from Hawaii, guys. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Anyway, I got my gloves. I got my mask. But because this is on uh, beyond kicking and punching, I am removing my mask. And I'm taking off my gloves because now we're going to have some fun. All right. So I want to introduce somebody that has been really important in my life and has really helped us to build up what we started off. Well, started off in, I guess, in the late 1960s, all the way up into the, uh, uh, the, the 70s and 80s, when we did a lot of things throughout the United States and naturally in Europe. And I really don't have to give that much because we're going to be talking about her anyway and the progress that we've made from the get go all the way up to now. And in life, there are chapters, you know, and every chapter in a book has up and down. We all go through failures and success, but it's what we take up from those things that make us who we are today. If we, if we just wallow in failures, then we're just staying there in the mud and don't get anywhere. But with things that happen, which is God-given, because God is the one, is the one that's putting this on us, because he knows how much the human being, the spirit can take. And as much as he gives us, we survive and we move forward. I wouldn't be where I am today. Malia wouldn't be where, where uh, she is today. And neither would anyone be where you are today if there were not ups and downs. This is what motivates us. And I always like to use the analogy of a bicycle. When you're riding on a bicycle, you push, you release, you push, you release, you push, you release. That means going, going, going forward. And you wonder why we have our eyes and ears forward. It's going forward. There's only a couple of things that are backwards and you know what they are and you're not going to go back there. All right. So without further delay, I'd like to bring on Malia de Coscos Burnell. Okay. Um, I, there's nothing more I can say. I mean, just so much we can talk about. So everybody, let's give a good old clap to Malia coming on with us. Come on, guys. Give it up. Give it up. Here we go. All right, Malia, it's yours. Ah, uh, you're wrong. I'm ready for you, Al. <laughs> oh, I'm coming to finish oh. what we didn't finish. I got the gloves on. Okay, you, you yeah, got on those little flimsy. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I, I got, got, I got my gloves on. I got my gloves on. I got my mask <laughs> off. You take your gloves off too. I want to give okay. you one good punch right now. Pow! Did you get it? Well, I, I felt it. I, I felt well, it. Well, maybe all I'll right. do it too. <laughs> all right. Right. Yeah. I felt that one too. All right, your reaction to right. getting slow in your old age. Uh, hey, thank what? you for inviting me on your podcast. This is awesome. I love it. Let's give people a show. All Let's right. give them something to remember. <laughs> Well, awesome, yeah. By the time we get to, done, done with this in here, they're going to have their heads full. Um, there's, I know there's a lot of things that people ask, you know, how, how did Malia be? I mean, what was she before martial arts? You know, what did you do? Now, we know that you like to do a lot of, at that time, water skiing, and I don't know if you still do, do it or not, but, you know, you already came into the school with athletic abilities, but I think it's beyond that. You had you had a good mindset on that thing, and as far as moving forward, you had that physical ability 
So what actually brought you into learning the martial arts? Because it's, that was your beginning, okay? Well, it wasn't my choice to get into the martial arts. I think if you will oh, remember, okay. it was my mother's choice that I get into the martial arts. She uh, she thought because, of course, I wasn't married to you at that time. I was married to uh, Craig's daddy, Anthony, and uh, he worked night shift. And my mother thought because I was home alone with my son that I should learn some sort of form of self-defense. And so uh, she she convinced my husband to buy me a, a, a certificate to be able to take self-defense. When I came to you, I was... Um, water skiing, snow skiing. I was already an athlete in pretty good shape. And I can never forget, uh, you always uh, said to me, because I had strong legs from water skiing and snow skiing, and my upper arms were strong from uh, water skiing, that you felt you at last had your female fighter. Do you remember that? Yep, I do. Yeah. And I remember uh, going into your school, I thought you were the handyman because you were hanging <laughs> from the rafters, fixing something. And when I looked up, I had no clue you were the sifu of the school until the day I lined up to take my first class and in walked the handyman who happened to be the sifu, Alda Cascos. So that was my beginning with Alda Cascos. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I know that we didn't have that much women in there, and um, we had a few, but they wouldn't last because my attitude and the attitude of a lot of the students was it was a man's school, and therefore, what, well, a lot of the women couldn't take it, but you just hung out there, and everything that we dished out, you did just as good as the man did, and women eventually started dropping out. What actually kept you motivated while all the other women was beginning to drop out? Well, you know, it was pretty hard to be in your school because it was at the onstart of my training with you. It, I didn't realize it until maybe a few weeks later that, uh, yes, there were about 20 women in there, but there were also mainly the school was made of Chinese, uh, Hispanic, Blacks, Filipinos. It was a man's school. It really wasn't a woman's school. And I could tell one by one, the women started dropping off because the men really, they didn't have any uh, sympathy on us since we were women. They could care less. They wanted all the women gone. And certainly Sifu wasn't going to ask us to leave. So this was maybe a message uh, relayed through Sifu to the students, get these women out of here so we can go back to being a men's club. But there was one woman that uh, they couldn't get rid of, and that was me. I was determined to stay there and learn this beautiful art of Kung Fu that this wiry, fresh off the boat Hawaiian was now in the mainland teaching. Uh, it was an honor to have been a student. <laughs> mm. What, uh, I, can't, I can't recall. I know that there's been so many firsts with you going, going into competition. What My was competition? The first no, the first, the first competition I put you in. Where was it in? Was it in Oakland or in- Well, the first uh, major no? competition that you ever my first major competition that you put me in was um, Ralph Castro's tournament. Do you remember that? That was my first major competition. Up until that, you put me in, if you will remember long ago, we used to have a lot of uh, tournaments in the park because martial arts wasn't a big thing at that time. You know, we didn't, we did parks, we did gymnasiums, we did school tournaments, but they were all major tournaments for, for our caliber. And so every weekend, I think I fought every single solitary weekend. And then finally, uh, after six weeks, you put me in a major tournament. And that was uh, Ralph Castro's. And I remember, I'll never forget, I bet you forgot. I actually won that tournament um, in my form. I, I, it was the first time to do this form really for all these many people. And I don't know how I ever got through it. I was so nervous during the form. But I know I did get through the form. And when I turned around, I bowed. And when I came back up, I realized I had, my back was to the judges. I, my butt was to the judges. 
and I was facing the audience. And so they did say, Malia de Cascos did win first place, but we have to take it away from her because we know she made a mistake. She was bowing to the audience, not the judges. <laughs> you know, I don't think it was the, the, the California championships. It was, it was Ed Parker's international karate championship in Long Beach. Because oh, you were on stage. Great. You were on stage and ah. the lights were coming on so bright and the lights actually disorientated you from where you were. So when you turned and faced the other way, I just about came out of my clothes. I was like, what the hell was she doing? Yeah, but nevertheless, you know, you did a really great, a great performance. And because it was an international karate championship, people coming in from all over the place, people remembered. I mean, and, you know, Mark and Craig was there. Even, even Mark comp competed when he was a little child. Okay, so we really had a good time. I remember that really distinctly because people came up to me and said, what happened? And I said, I don't know, but I mean, if you're on the stage and you don't, and the lights are coming in from four different directions and you don't see the audience, you don't even know where you are, especially when you jumped up into the air and did the, uh, the, uh, the, the butterfly kick. That is where you got confused right from there, from the point that you landed, because you, you did, instead of doing a 360, you did a 360 and another 80, 180. And then that, that, that kind of messed you up. It stays you in know, my head, but that was- you know, you know, Al, when I think back, and even though I did start martial arts in the 60s uh, and into the 70s, I think that you, as well as myself, we were really ahead of the game, ahead of ourselves. Our style, our fighting, our uniforms, our technique, everything about us was equal with what's going on today. We were never uh, 10 years behind. We were always 10 years in front. And that was uh, the amazing style that you were teaching that you brought over. You know, I, I always say this to a lot of people and I have to say it to this group of people that maybe don't know that um, uh, there's a lot of people that debate this, but Al really was Imperato's protege. And I can say that because uh, when I was in Hawaii uh, to, to compete, um, Al introduced me to Imperato and, you know, I kind of became a little favorite of Imperato's and sometimes he would chit chat with me. And one time I remember him putting his arm around my shoulder and saying he was watching Al do something and he said, that's my that's my boy, or however he said it. And he said, that that's my protege. He said he had high hopes in you. So I don't think I even ever shared that with you, Al, because your head was already big enough. I didn't <laughs> want it bigger. So I couldn't tell you that. But Amparato always did look at you as if uh, you were the future and you were his protege. So all of you that follow other styles, you know, you go to other Kaja Kempel schools and learn, you have to remember that this is, I'm telling you from my mouth that the original protege from Imperato was Al de Cascos. And, um, and that is true. So Al, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But another thing I wanna tell you about the style and the teaching that you gave to me when I was learning. The reason later on years in my life, I'm able to free flow with anything, any problem, any situation, anything that I am presented with is because as a student of yours, I can remember you telling me one time, I was nervous about having to do something. And I went to you and I said, oh, I can't do this or whatever, my normal jittery. And you said, I've taught you to kick, I've taught you to punch, I've taught you to do everything. Now let's see how you put it together. You taught me free flow. You taught me how not to have to rely on techniques how to go with a given situation. So as I progressed in martial arts, what I learned from you carried over in conversation. As you can see, I miss verbal diarrhea. <laughs> I have no problem talking. I can talk for days. And this came from you telling me, Malia, you gotta learn to flow. You gotta learn to keep going. And in tournaments, when I used to uh, forget, I would keep going, keep going, keep going, because I would hear that in my head. Okay. I'll be quiet. <laughs> Maria, I'm just going to add this because this in here brings me to a certain individual when we were up in, I think, in New um, St. Louis, Missouri, or somewhere up in the mid 
Midwest, where we actually fought uh, and did forms. And you you did a form, and one of the individuals on the side, right, said, "Hey, I hope you don't mind me." shooting that films because it kind of brought back the memory i remember the form now but the problem with that was this a couple of months later we saw the guy do the form that you did and it was wrong and i asked him what happened he says you know when malia did the form she did it exactly the way i remember it so i filmed it so i wouldn't forget the point was just that in the middle of number six, somewhere two thirds down the way, you got lost, and you <laughs> fake it, and you just did whatever you can, you 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 did to come back into the form, and you won. And what was amazing was that that you picked up to never stop and continue create and just free flow. That guy picked it up, and the ironic thing about it, he won. From the form that you made up one third of the way. Yeah, I was putting my style together way back then. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? Okay, that's that's what it happens you know, in life. Is when when uh when you hit a bump in the road, you adjust and you adjust it real quick, and nobody knew it. They didn't even see it because they thought it just flowed so well that they was thought, wow, that looks good. So that's. Well, that's another lesson. And you well, know, what? I that remember thing... a situation one time when I don't know where I was. I certainly wasn't in California. It must have been somewhere south. Uh, I did a form, and I, I know all you guys. You all have been in competition. You know what it's like when you get up. All your, at least my mind, everything leaves my head, and I go, "Oh, what am I doing?" Anyhow, on this particular tournament, I stood up, and all the blood rushed to my head. And, I couldn't even remember the first move of the form. And so I thought, you can't make a fool of yourself, Malia. You got to do something. So I began making up a form. And I had to keep making up a form until I recognized, oh, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But at the end of this form, what was so funny about this is that the man taking my picture came up to me and he said, oh, I remember you doing that form in the last tournament. I said, you, you've you seen me do that form before? He said, yes, that was beautiful. You did it beautiful. And I just laughed because, <laughs> you know, in the martial art world, we know, that, uh, especially when you're a competitor and you begin to make a name for yourself, you, you meet a lot of people that like to pretend like they they know you or they're following you or they, they've been your fan and oh, hogwash, they never were my fan, probably never saw me before in its life. But anyhow, it was his way to come and talk to me. But I remember that uh, I I don't I always had a hard time with uh, nerves. Oh, nerves were uh, I would rather fight any day than to do a form. Any 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 day, I'd rather get out and fight than to have to stand up and do a form when everybody's quiet, standing, and those judges are looking at you saying, okay, show me why you should win. That's a horrible feeling. But anyhow, Al, I want to apologize for all the times that I screwed up everything you ever taught me. And I know I probably gave you gray hair way back then because I can remember sometimes seeing you throw your hands on your head. And I can remember people were telling me, Al saying, what's she doing? What's she doing? And I was just doing what Malia does, improvise. <laughs> you know, there was... I know Sonny has a picture of it, and that's a picture of you, your, 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 the fight that you had at the International Karate Championship with Lily. And I know that was one of your most significant fights. That You've had so many fights coming on, and that is what made you the number one women fighter in the United States, as well as the form. But I want to talk about the fighting part of it. And what people don't realize is just that in form competition, you try to do it exactly the way it is because you are actually um, performing when you do a form. And people are looking for the preciseness and everything else, which Malia did. Whatever mistake she did, she flowed, she covered it up. But that also transformed into her fighting ability. And you know, when you begin to fight, there's, there's there's no mistakes over there because any mistake you make, you're going to get hit. And I can remember a lot of times 
that I would just kind of signal Malia to do a certain technique and she would do it and follow up and it was score. Uh, there have been so many tournaments that I've witnessed on the sideline. And there's a lot of times I didn't have to say anything because intuitively, intuitively it was already ingrained into her head. She did it. And we always say this, train the way you fight and fight the way you train. And the way she fought in tournaments was exactly the way we fought uh, and, and trained in the school. So with that mindset, she came across very strong and I'm really, really proud because she was the pinnacle of all the other women that came after her. Now we've had a lot of champions that she's built, you know, uh, to, to help uh, grow up there. Like, you know, Karen Shepard, Karen Turner, and, uh, and then she has a whole group of people that she's also training now. So now that you have, I've said that, Malia, you have a lot of good women fi uh, fighters or, or students in California. Who is your top student there now? My best student now, well, you know, um, at the present time, there is no best student. You know, martial arts is, has gone way down because of the pandemic. And uh, I teach out in the park. I, uh, I, I focus, my, my best student right now, if you want to talk about, uh, is not in the martial art world, it's in the fitness world. And that's focusing on getting people healthy to be able to uh, fight all that we're having to deal with. I had a group of women when we were, and men, not just women, when everything was normal and schools were functioning, I had the most, I had the most amazing group of uh, uh, students. And uh, uh, my students basically also were uh, from China. They were from Vietnam. Uh, they were from uh, the other parts of the world. And I, I was so blessed to be able to teach them. I had, uh, my, my best student uh, would have been Yin, uh, and then uh, Ni Hai, and then all of these students, um, I, I wish, you know, they could not only uh, did form, but they fought, and that's, that's something most people don't, you know, people think of me, they identify me with form, that, that is, uh, you know, I, uh, that's the fastest way at that time for me to make a name was through form, but my God, I was a fighter, a hardcore fighter. I didn't uh, just walk home with these little trophies. I won the internationals seven times in the row. I won the internationals five times for fighting and form combined. Uh, so uh, I I took all of that knowledge that uh, to become a champion. And and if you will remember way before I started having my own school. You know, we went to Europe, Al, and we developed the champions over there. So um, I, I, you taught, I taught, we developed a huge empire in Germany. That doesn't even go to, you know, what we developed in California was amazing, but uh, we lived in a different generation then. We moved out of uh, the States and we went to Europe and we developed uh, I mean, I couldn't speak German, you couldn't speak German, what on earth were we doing in a country? We couldn't even speak the language, but yet we were developing these amazing, amazing students. And I can never forget uh, all the champions that uh, I developed in Germany. Uh, I had uh, Regina, I had Tomoko, I had Beata, I had uh, uh, Anna Boom. I mean, they were, you know, they were little uh, German ladies who came into the school to learn and, and we taught them. We had, uh, I had, I'll never forget my student Hubert Wolf. Hubert was probably the one that was responsible for me getting men to come into my class because I did something about if, you know, it was hard for women to get uh, men in their classes in Germany because Germany is a, a father country. And so I didn't have a lot of men. And so I remember Hubert, you know, he grabbed me one time and he said, if you can get out of this, you know, and I remember my hands were free. I turned around, pinched Hubert, he dropped me. And that was my beginning of Hubert being my student. And I, after Hubert, I had, we had, Al, if you will remember all these amazing people that we developed and they became champions and, and they were known throughout the world. My German students were known in America. I don't think anybody will ever forget Regina and Tomoko. 
who came. Tomoko was from Japan. Regina was from Germany. But if you will remember, Al, we used to encourage our German students to come to America and yeah. and to to train. I had. Uh, I'm so sorry that it, I never. Um, uh, stayed in Germany to develop the amazing champions that I was trying to develop. I'll never forget Yamil. Yamil is long spaghetti legs, but you know, the one good thing I can say about Yamil is that Yamil and I, and I have reconnected and he's got champions that are learning what I'm teaching. And that's absolutely amazing. Now, I don't even know if you're aware of the fact that my no. style, she and I Kung Fu, is in Europe. It is in Germany. It is being taught. And more champions will be taught in Germany and uh, come out and come to America. But right now, here in America, I, I teach privates in the, in the park. I have 18 classes I teach a week. I, part of it's fitness. The rest of it is uh, forms. I started teaching, oh, you know, I haven't patience really to teach children, but I need to learn to teach children. So I've started teaching children. And uh, actually, it's quite nice. They're, they're easy to teach. And, you know, but my champions out with Shi and Dai Kung Fu, I had every tournament I put them in. I don't think you were ever there to see, but they never lost. They won their fighting. They won their form. Um, and they even did their, their weapons. But, you know, Al, I have to say something as we're talking about fighting. You know, my most hardest fights were always uh, when I didn't want to fight in America, in California anymore, because every weekend it was same people, same things, same faces, same this, same that. And I, I knew I wanted to become number one. So if you want to become number one, you better spread yourself here and there and see what life is all about. My hardest places I ever, ever, ever fought was in Texas, in Oklahoma, in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, going to these countries actually uh, helped me become a better, uh, going to these states to become a better martial artist because I had never in a million years seen women fight like they fought when I went to Texas and Oklahoma and, and uh, these states back there. They fought totally, totally, totally different than the women in, in California. And so for all the Texas women out there, I may not have won. It was too much of a, a shock to my system. I never expected Sherman tanks to come fly, flowing in at me. You taught me so much and I learned so much. But the one thing I can say about going to that part of the world was Kung Fu was always strong. It always won in the form division. Okay, Al, sorry. I get carried away with stories. No, yeah. Yeah, that, that was it was great it was good insight on that and yes you do have to spread your wings and you know spreading your wings is the only way that you fly and the thing that you want to uh, recall you remember when we did our first in school tournament or a tournament that we did in Europe they were only giving out certificates and medals and so what we did was just that we ordered some of this uh, trophies uh, with the karate man on it from the United States and we made our own trophies. Yes. And that was the first time that people had seen like, you know, when you get a first place and the first place trophy was one meter tall and people were just panicking and say, wow, that's really big. And from that point on, I could see the Germans adopting, going into the trophies where before it was just plain certificate and just a medal. So we did do some changes in there. And then the big changes that we did, especially with the way that you coached and everything was just that they never had that many women. The thing that we did, all, all we noticed that in Germany, tournaments now, because of you having the attitude of women going forward, there were more women competitors as we as before there were not as many but when I begin to see the women competitors come in this is when we began to do our own tournament and I forgot yes. what it was called the Costco's um, whatever championship and it's still going on today but it was what we did and what basically um, it was a lot of things had to do because of the woman factor what made us up there was they saw that there was a woman that was leading 
And you were a very good leader in showing that you had the tenacity, you, you could talk, you could do form, you could demonstrate. And remember when I broke my leg, who taught the classes? You taught all my classes for me for, the, for about five months before, while I was recovering in my, <laughs> in my crutches. You remember that, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> and, and then you did have a lot of men that kind of resisted that at the very beginning. But after a while, they kind of figured out, well, you know, you could kick some butts anyway, so why not? And uh, I really, really do appreciate what you did. Yes, well, you know, um, I, I am so appreciative that we were able to go to the other side of the world and take our art. I know that you thought I was crazy when I said, let's go. I, you know me, I was always an adventure. Let's go to the other side of the world. And, you know, our poor kids, they, you know, they didn't know what they were in for, but, um, I'm so thankful that the German, uh, the Germans gave us the opportunity. Uh, look at my sweet little boy. Look at Al and I, we're so young. <laughs> I love that picture. Uh, I'm so I'm so appreciative that the Germans gave us the opportunity to to teach them um, and and to educate them with your amazing style. Um, you will always be the leader. There is no other. Al Dukaskos is the leader of One Hop Kundo. It is his style. He is the founder, and there is no one above him. Al Dukaskos is One Hop Kundo. And all of you have to remember that. That is, uh, you without Al Dukaskos, none of you would have the knowledge that you have today to have been able to open up schools and teach and this and that. Yes, some of you have been done wrong, but in my book, you're you're okay. You're all okay. I love you all. But uh, just remember who your leader is. Uh, Al Dukaskos, um, is my leader in uh, One Hump Kundo. Uh, he is responsible for teaching me uh, to become a champion. And I will never uh, uh, deny that. Al Dukaskos made me uh, who I am today. I did. He did the teaching, I did the walking. So all of you that are in uh, other states, other countries, and you're learning from Al, you just have to remember he is the leader of One Hump Kundo. Um, and what he says goes, it's his style. Okay, Al, I just have to say that because I, I never I, get to see anybody. Yeah, I appreciate that, um, but um, that, that's nice. Here's the thing, people, that over the years between Malia and I on the mainland and in Europe and different, different parts teaching, <laughs> that we have over the years since, so I would say when I started teaching back in 19, 65 all the way up to now it was awesome and mind-boggling when i begin to see that we have had over a hundred thousand students learn under us both as you know students today and alumni it's over that so it's all over the world because i've got people you know just talking to me from South Africa or even from the latest one I had was I didn't even know that I had a school in in of all places in Syria and and in Iraq and Iran that was teaching and had Kaju Kembo and one hop Kendo, all the influence because of what we had and what was interesting was that when one of the students says yes I remember you and Malia when I was when when uh, back in the 1970s and this person now is in Iran. And then there was another one that, that just completely blew my mind was somewhere in Siberia, you know? And he had his own little group teaching in Siberia. And I'm thinking, wow, why would anybody want to go into a cold, desolate, desolate places? But one hop Kyondo has reached everywhere. It was interesting that uh, both Malia and I, of all places, appeared on covers in China, on magazine, in the Chinese magazine, which was, which was amazing because that's the home place of where Kung Fu came from. But the innovation of what Kung Fu is, remember that a lot of people realize that the word Kung Fu means skill through the accumulation of hard work and practice. 
Well, that is what made us who we are, and that is what made Malia who she is, because she put inside the hard work and a lot of blood and sweat, which beyond the just kicking and punching of the martial arts, led her into her fitness program. And I want to know more about your fitness program. I'm sorry, I'll say that again. I want to know about your fitness program. My fitness? You mean what I used to try to teach you? Fitness? <laughs> uh, my fitness program is absolutely uh, amazing. It's hot. It's, uh, I have students that come to me that were uh, 110 pounds, and I've got them down to 160 pounds. I am not a failure at fitness, I'll tell you that. If you want to be fit, you've got, this is the person to get you there. I'm like a drill sergeant. The other half of me has always been, you know, I love fighting in form, but I, I'm, I believe that if you're not fit, it's kind of hard because uh, to become a whole person when you're not, you're not fit. Ah, there I am. I've always trained. This is in Germany. I'm always at an ungodly hour of the morning. I can remember that as plain as if it was yesterday. Um, I, I used to also run at the planetarium. This was not at the planetarium, but I used to get up at 5.30, 5 in the morning and sneak into the planetarium and run. I can remember in, in when the winter time it was cold and snowy and the whole planetarium was filled with snow and the only tracks that were available were my feet and the feet of little rabbits. It was absolutely I loved it. I loved everything about uh, teaching my fitness in Germany. Um, that actually is what I did with a lot of the students, Sal, before they came to you in Germany. I had them for the first half and I got them fit. By the time they went over to you, all you had to do was teach them technique. You had the easy job. I had the hard job. But <laughs> fitness for me has always been uh, number one. And uh, I don't know if you guys... Uh, I'm really honored to be uh, able to continue on with my fitness and, and my Shi and Dai Kung Fu with uh, a student that used to be my student long time ago, and that is Yamil. And I don't know if you remember Yamil Al, but he used to be our student in, uh, in Seilerstrasse. But then when I came to America, uh, he left. Uh, he didn't stay in the school too much longer because a lot of the students were not only motivated by you, they were also motivated by me. And what a shame that two powerhouses, you know, that we uh, split our styles because together we had an amazing uh, style to present to the world. But Yamil School is the school that I always like to, to talk about when you think about fitness because it's not only a kick, um, boxing and fitness and martial arts, the whole works, but he as well really uh, uh, spends a lot of time and energy on his students to get fit because his mindset is also of the same. You should be fit. And so, uh, yes, Al, I, I teach here uh, my fitness and I, my Shi and Dai Kung Fu. And, you know, I have you to thank for my fitness, Al, because um, had it not been for uh, certain events in our life, I would have never gone into fitness, never in a million years would I have, you know, gone totally in that direction, fitness. But, you know, I'm not a, I don't sink. I'm a, even though I can't swim, I won't drown. I can dog paddle. I keep going. And so uh, when certain events happened in, in, in our lives, you know, you, you, this is what you realize you learn from the arts. You either sink or swim. I, I, I don't sink. And, and because of you, I was able to develop this amazing program of fitness, which I incorporated with my Shi and Dai Kung Fu. So, Al, I thank you for that because I never, never would have I gone into fitness, weightlifting. I don't even know if you remember seeing those pictures. I, I mean, I always was strong, but I was curious. Look at those. I had muscles galore. On, and that um, I, I liked it. I thought women should have uh, they should know fitness. Look at my sons. Look at Craig with this long hair. Look at Mark. Look at that's an amazing. I love that. I love my my. I think I told the story, but I I won't tell it now. But what I'm wearing has a, a, a great story to it. But Al, you can see, you know, I'm sure you've met a lot of my students. Uh, 
one time or another you did come out here and you've met them and you know they were all fit. And I did you ever see them compete, Al? Go ahead. Are you listening? Are you doing like you used to do when I did my form? You'd be looking at the birds and not me. Did you ever <laughs> see my students compete? Yeah, I, I have. I've seen your students compete. Okay. Now, pay uh, yeah, attention. I can, uh, yeah, what? yeah, and there's a lot and there's a lot of your personal expression uh, in them and I can see it, you know, because you can you can actually see a person and even if you squint your eyes like you hardly can see, you can see, you can see Malia doing the movements. And that was that was amazing, okay? Um, you know, I want to talk about something that um, a lot of people don't realize was just that the the school that came out with a lot of champions in in Germany was a school that we had on the Zylus in Zylusstrasse, which was a Raperbahn. And people people really don't realize something that that what you brought back to America was just that the jazz gymnastic music that we had because our club, which was at the basement of a discotheque at the very top and a sex shop right next door. So we had a lot of music, discotheque music, in which at the very beginning of class, we were using that as a means to do our fitness exercise uh, getting into shape, which actually led, and I believe, into what happened in the United States where um, disco type of music was beginning to start taking place in a lot of demonstrations and fitness program. And you know that I, I see a lot of things that had happened with, with music being put into workouts, but when it came to it, I kind of think that it started in the Zylustrasse, in the Raperbahn, when we were practicing with music from the next door sex shop and the discotheque upstairs. I know, you know, I don't think, you know, there's something that I, if I'm wrong, those of you that live in Germany, tell me I'm wrong. But remember when we moved to Germany and, and Mark and Craig, I'll never forget this. I got up one night, a potty run and there's Mark and Craig in the living room watching television and they were watching uh, a sex movie on television and I almost <laughs> had heart failure and and then I remember I I was told that it was in Germany um, I don't know if it's still the same I don't think so but long ago they didn't like violence they didn't even like uh, the three stooges uh, violence is not natural but uh, the relationships and, 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 and sex was natural. So rather than show violence on television, they would show romantic movies. Is that so or not so? Who can, uh, tell me somebody. Christian Wolf, you've been there forever. Is that so? You can't hear. <laughs> well, no, he can't, he can't say anything because I think his wife is watching oh, him. Oh yeah, he's, he's <laughs> most muted. Nobody can yeah. hear me. I'm talking to There's, myself. Uh, yeah, I I think. Uh, no, it's uh, um, we at that time we had a lot of romantic uh, movies on TV, like um, Richard Gere and what was a um, some very romantic. But we had a lot of Jackie Chan and and all the movies too. Yeah, we remember we had we didn't have only the sex movie theater next to the school uh, on the on the roof we had the normal movie theater there was they were always playing the jackie chan movie and mark and manuel and me we always went after training up around the stairs without paying and look all the jackie chan movies on the on the roof of our school that what what i remember it was a good time oh my gosh all right, but but you know uh, the uh, the Raper Bond. I I wouldn't have wanted my school to be anywhere else but the Raper Bond. That was uh, amazing. My kids learned so much about life. Um, I met a whole a group of people 
that I would never have known had I not been teaching in the Rape of Bond. I loved that school. That, that school um, has such fond memories. And to, you know, I'm sad that I, I know the first generation, but I don't know the second generation. And I don't know the third generation because I never had the opportunity to meet them. But I do know the first generation. There they are. Uh, each and every one of these guys, uh, one time or another, uh, they've been in my, uh, on my floor training with me. And uh, I, I, I love every one of you. You guys gave me an opportunity to, to practice and, uh, and to train and to teach. And look at Tasso's. And I, I, I love my rocker there. And Jan, I never knew Jan was so sick. Jan, I pray for you to continue to be healthy. And Emmanuel, my African child, I love you so much, Emmanuel. And there's Julio, my, he's, he's there to do anything for me. And there's Christian, the first student that I developed uh, to bring to America. And he, he was able to do very well for himself in the martial art world. But I'm, I'm very honored to have taught the first generation. And I'm sorry that the first generation didn't think it would have been cool for me to teach the second generation, but that's okay. Uh, I've got uh, uh, lots of knowledge that maybe sometime we'll still be able to teach you. Okay, Al, what else are we talking about? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, for people that don't know the Raperbahn, the Raperbahn in Hamburg, Germany, is the red light district. Um, that place is almost 24 seven. It really doesn't sleep. And if anybody wanted action, that is where it happened on the Raperbahn. It was really, really interesting. Um, and I think I got to tell this story, uh, Malia, because you remember this. On the Raperbahn, there's all kinds of people. We've got people that are on one side of the law and the other side of the law. And our school was located right next or opposite the police station. And on the corner, there was this Vinovad place where they were selling chickens and everything. And some of the- some of the or something like that. <laughs> was that? Are you talking about it? The the grilled and the rotisserie, the chickens. Yes, 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 yes. And what was really, really interesting and one of the parts that you and I panicked because we were driving down the road by the police station going to the school and right across now, our, the, the school was across the police station. Across the police station was a Vinovad on the corner. And this was about uh, maybe seven o'clock in the evening or eight o'clock in the evening. And there's a lot of what they call women of the night working on the streets there, okay? Because you're gonna find gangsters, you're gonna find, uh, you know, people of uh, whatever, okay? And there was this one student of ours, right? A woman on the corner. She was in our class. I won't mention names or anything. Wearing a Dacascos t-shirt, <laughs> right? And we looked at her and he says, what are you doing? Oh, look, Sifu, I'm, look, I'm. And we were so embarrassed because she was the woman of the night. And I think that was the most funniest thing because you just kind of panicked and we told her, take that thing off, take it off, take it off. And I think oh. I gave her a mouth lashing and when, when the, the, the following day when she came to school, but yeah, talking about the school that we had, our school was very, very colorful because we had, we had attorneys in there, we had doctors in there, we had, we had uh, 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 you know, the criminal element in there, but the school was common ground. Whatever you did in your profession was left outside. We came, we trained, and then when, after you finished, you went out and you did whatever you did, and there was, there was whatever. But I think the thing, if I remember that there were, we had a lot of, American students that came to visit our school. And for them, it was a shocker when the sauna and the shower was co-ed. And I remember a couple of people walking into there, taking a shower from, from America and just panicked to see why is this woman taking a shower? I said, hey, it's co-ed. <laughs> but anyway, there was a thing that, that a lot of people don't realize. 
in America is just that it didn't matter because human beings are human beings. Yeah, so I just had to throw that in because well, I, I would like open... to say one thing. I think, you know, Mark and Craig's mind really opened up living in Europe because uh, I think if America wasn't so closed on everything, you, you know, uh, when we had our school and you, you, we had the sauna and, and and we used to have the, the guys that came from America to, to visit, they, they used to act like children because they were going to have to get into a, a, a take a sauna or a shower with naked women. What's wrong with naked women? You know, the <laughs> naked man, they're going in there to shake a shower. But the American men would act so foolish over the fact that they're going to get into a shower with the, these women that were doing nothing more than had worked out hard taking a shower. They could care less about this man. They wanted to get cleaned up and leave. I'm grateful that Mark and Craig grew up in Europe because they learned uh, both sides of uh, the cultures of the world from many different from many different countries, not just Germany. And I think if America wasn't so narrow-minded on so many issues, maybe we wouldn't have as many problems as we have today, because uh, there's nothing wrong with nudity. Yeah, let me just, I'm, I'm gonna share a story that is kind of awkward, but I, I wanna share it anyway. We had a sauna, you know, which was which is co-ed, and one of our students from America decided he was gonna take a, a, a sauna. And I'm not gonna mention the name because you know who it is. I don't wanna embarrass him at all. But he went into the sauna, you know, with a towel on and stayed in there. And it was, it was, I think he stayed in there maybe 12 minutes or something and he was ready to come out. And then two women went into the sauna with him, right? And they were pretty much bare naked and everything. And he just panicked. So he didn't wanna stand up and go up. So he stayed there inside the sauna so long that after the women left about which was about 20 minutes later i was looking for him i said what the hell where is he at and here he was outside the front door of the sauna crawling on his hands and knees because he was totally exhausted i said what happened he said i couldn't get out i was so embarrassed so i stayed in the sauna a little bit longer and i tell you he was just about i mean he was just about totally exhausted. And I said, why did you come out? He says, well, because they were naked and I didn't want to go go out and embarrass myself. I said, well, it's your fault if you stayed there in a lot longer. But that was hilarious. Staying in there and over, probably he got overcooked because he came out really bad. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, had a good times over here. What is, what is, um, what is your most, let's see, what is your most inspirational moment? My most inspirational moment? Yeah. Oh my God, that, you can't ask me that question. I've got many inspirational moments. Ask me another one. question. Then I ask you the same. Just give me one. Uh, inspirational. Um, my most inspirational moment was raising Mark and Craig from little tiny boys and uh, I was so inspired to see Mark succeed and Craig succeed with the crazy life that they lived uh, with Al as daddy and, and Malia as mama. They inspired me that no matter uh, how bad situations are, that uh, you can pull up out of it, keep going and uh, become what they are today, successful. I'm inspired when I see people uh, who are down and out pull themselves up and keep going forward. I'm inspired by each and every person on this screen uh, that I'm looking at. Uh, Ron Liu developed a style. I, I look at Emmanuel Betancourt, who was in he inspired me. That you say one, I can't. Emmanuel inspired me. Jan, who was so sick, and now look at him. I didn't know you were sick. I'm so happy. I'm inspired that you had the courage to fight. And one person, I don't even know if you're there because I can't see, Michael Timberman. I have to say something to Michael Timberman if he is there. When we were um, in Portugal, Michael Timberman did the most touching thing for me because he publicly got up on the PA system and acknowledged me, um, which was something that was touched my heart. I was inspired by his courage to get up 
and say wonderful things about his past training. Uh, and, and, and I can never forget Emmanuel and Hubert who never ever, uh, they inspired me for good things in life because they never, they never forgot Christmas and birthdays. They were always there. I'm inspired when Yamil uh, found me and gives me the opportunity to teach Shi and Dai Kung Fu. I cannot give you one example. Well, a lot of inspiration comes, comes out of it. Our time is almost coming up, but I know I want to have you back again. But what word of wisdom would you leave with the people that are on now? I didn't understand your question. You're not coming in clear. <laughs> okay, now let's, let's try it again. What words of wisdom would you give our audience now? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know one word of what you're saying. I'm, I'm, my phone went off. Say it again. What words of wisdom would you give our audience Words now? of wisdom? Oh, my God. Words of wisdom? I, try, I pray to God every day to teach me to have wisdom because I'm learning about wisdom. I, I'm not a very wise person woman in many areas so i'm not qualified to give words of wisdom but i can say that um no matter uh, what you're facing in life um to pray and ask for wisdom and the good lord will has always given me the wisdom to be able to uh walk another mile run another mile lift another weight wisdom is something uh, common sense is something that most people don't have. Wisdom is something that you have to work for. So if you don't have wisdom, work for it. Uh, I can't give you words of wisdom. I can well, only say pray when you don't know uh, what you should do and God will give you words of wisdom. Well, your actions speak louder than words. And when people see you, that the way that you come out, your facial reaction, your words, the words that you say are very inspirational. And whether you think about it or not, because it just flows out of you, it's very encouraging to hear a woman speak in words that other women fail or neglect to say or don't want to say at all. Because knowing you, you've never been one that would go into a shell and when things got tough, your gloves come on or maybe it comes off and you start hitting harder, which is something that is very inspirational. And there's a lot of wisdom in that. They say that a picture holds a thousand words. Your action alone says a lot of words. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to turn it over to Sunny. And so maybe there are some people that have some really quick questions. If you have, maybe we can spend just a few minutes asking the questions and if you have it just kind of unmute yourself and and ask Sunny about it okay all right let's go for that anybody got any questions all right if anybody I, I, has, you know, Sunny before you go I just want sure. to say to all these people on this screen you know those of you that uh, forgiveness is the healing of life and all of you who may have um problems with one another that's such a foolish childish trait you know children you know we grow up and 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 we outgrow that i'm a uh, you know i have no hard feelings against anybody anything because life is so fragile as you can well see i wish for everybody on the screen to have success happiness health i wish for all of us to come together as a family like we used to be not a family where we are not black and white yellow and blue we are a family and we all bleed red blood so please all of us come together and learn to forgive inspire love and open doors that you have closed that's awesome I'm sorry, Sunny. <laughs> well, thank no, no, you that, very much that Malia. Goes uh, greatly <laughs> I'm speechless when it comes down to it. I mean, you've inspired yeah, you me. Yeah, left you speechless. <laughs> <laughs> so if hey. anything, I've got the gallery showing on my end. If anybody does have a question, 
can you guys raise your hand up? And what I will do is I'll get you to unmute and then we can uh, ask Malia personally. And it seems like Sifu El De La Cruz wants to be unmuted. So if you can do that, uh, unmute yourself, Sifu El De La Cruz, so you can ask your question. Did you say something? You disappeared. I guess he's just waving and saying hello to you and everybody else. All Doesn't right. somebody on the screen have a question for me? I want to talk to somebody other than all the Costco's. Uh, <laughs> Anybody have how a you, question? How oh. you how you how you speak on this thing? And that and that you're too good on this. Oh, go ahead. You can ask. I'm, uh, oh, Melia. What? You know? Do you remember me? Uh, you know, you you need to put Al Costco's up here next to you, Sonny. He's bouncing all over this screen. Where are you, Al? I don't know. Okay. Okay. okay all that's right. Hell. Up here. All right. Hey, there you are up there in the corny. What have you got to say for yourself, young man? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. You still look the same. I met oh, you a long, that's long time. That's a good time. compliment. I try. I, I try to keep fit and keep healthy and well, not I, I, age. I, I, I met you a long, long time ago. You don't remember me. Oh, of course she does. You know, the picture of you on this screen is not the greatest. I'm sure you're... <laughs> you're I can't see you. You're, on, you're faded. <laughs> Wait, wait, let you see. How do I know? I, okay, Alfred. Are you Alfred? Alfred, Nella Cruz. Oh, Alfred, of course I know you. You're yeah, Al's yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah, me and Al, you know, we're all, we, 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 doing the martial arts together. Way back in the 60s, in the early 50s. We was back with, in we Hawaii, was, right? Yes, we was with Cedar Sunshine. Remember? Oh, Alfred, you're going, I can't hear you. I'm talking Filipino. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no, no. Al and I, we took under the same teacher, Sida yes. Sanchin. Yes. Sida Sanchin. Remember him? Oh, who could forget Sid? I went fishing okay. with him out in that ridiculous boat and got seasick. <laughs> well, I met you a long time ago. It's okay if you forget me. That's all right. I, I remember you, though. <laughs> All yes, right. I well, thank you, Siku El De La Cruz. All right. Does anybody else have a, a question for Malia or Siku El? If you do, raise your hand and up. Tom, Anthony, Anthony has a question, or are you just All waiting right, at me? All right, let's get you to unmute yourself, Anthony. Hey, don't okay. panic. Just, just talk. Well, he's got himself unmuted, or he needs to unmute on oh. his end. Oh. Okay. Greetings oh, from Sunny, Hamburg. This, you know, is it me? Am I am I losing oh, my that's, hearing? That's my wife. Uh, and, and, Sunny, I don't have this trouble on road to the I car. <laughs> <laughs> that's my wife, Susanne, from Hamburg. Hello, <laughs> Susanne. Hello. Hi, Sifu. Al, where are you? You're bouncing all over the screen. It's in. Oh, there you are. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, I'm back. Okay, there we go. Anthony's back on, Malia. Anthony, I see you now. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, I have two things. I um, just want to let you, um, you and Steve, I don't know, uh, come up myself with the martial arts, that you guys were always my heroes, seeing you guys. And to this day, you guys are both my, my heroes in the martial arts. And my other question is, how do you guys like uh, being called the sunniest share of martial arts? Anthony, you faded away. I said, how did you like being called a sunny and share of martial arts? Oh, Sonny, I don't know what he's saying. What did he say? Malia, he was asking, how do you feel being known as the sunny and share of martial arts? How I feel being known as? The sunny and share of martial arts. How do I feel? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. How do I feel being known as what? Sonny and um, Cher. Sun, you know the singers? Sonny and Cher oh, of the, the martial arts world. The series Kung Fu? <laughs> what is no. Fading away. I'm, I'm sorry, Malia. I, I'm not sure what uh, is going on, but can you hear me now? Give me a thumbs up if you hear me. 
Can you hear me, Malia? No, I, I'm sorry. You, I must have a really rotten connection here because you're fading on me. Okay, does everybody okay, else hear me? If everybody else hears me, give me a thumbs up. Hmm. I can do okay. thumbs up. I hear that. Okay, Malia, oh. there, Anthony is asking about how do you feel being known as the Sonny and Cher of martial arts? Oh, the Sonny and Cher of martial arts. Now you came through. I, I always thought it was a compliment because I thought it was quite true. I feel like I am Sonny and I feel like he, uh, I mean, I feel like I am Cher and he's Sonny. <laughs> we, we were quite a team way back then and uh, um, yeah, I always was yelling at Al and telling him what to do and telling him how to dress. We were really Sonny and Cher, that is true. I. I took that as a compliment and I told Al today I was going to remind him, remember when we used to be Sonny and Cher? And he said, no, no, no. Remember what happened to Sonny? And I said, oh, okay, Ben. I, he, he passed away, so I, I'll forget on that. But I thought that was cool. And uh, yeah, we were known, uh, I was known as, we were known as Sonny and Cher and I was known as Miss Hollywood in her pajamas. <laughs> That's how they used to. Uh, do you remember Al when they used to dress me as Miss Hollywood in her pajamas every time I went to Texas or to Oklahoma or to New York? They say, "Oh, here she comes in her silky pajamas." <laughs> well, what stands out most, what I remember, was in Houston, Texas, when you did your form number six, and you went up to do the silam kick, and your shoes flew off your foot. Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> My, I. I never wear shoes again. I did the kick and the shoe went way high up and it came down and I just picked my shoe up and left. And the, <laughs> the head judge said, had you not left, Malia, you could have continued on. Do you also remember Jim Harrison? It was only mm -hmm. me that all these crazy things happened to. Jim Harrison asked me to break down my form. He wanted to know what this was all about. And I said, oh my God, nobody ever asked me to do this. Okay. And then Jim Harrison also, when I was doing form in the middle of my form, really going at it, he he stops everything and he calls me up to him. And he says, Malia, uh, come. And he whispered in my ear, aren't you uncomfortable? And I said, uncomfortable? No, why? He said, because your bra strap broke. <laughs> it was hanging from under my my uniform. And I'm on Jim Harrison, every time he saw me after that, he would ask me, how am I doing? But uh, lots of names we were called. Sonny and Cher, Miss Hollywood, uh, lots of names I don't want to mention, but uh, I loved every <laughs> one of them because it's memories that we can now laugh at. Yeah. Well, that's great. We come to the end of our time. I'm Leah, I'm gonna have you back on and probably with the, the, the boys, Mark and Craig also, yeah, as a family on it. But we'll talk about that later. Um, everybody, if you can unmute your, 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 uh, your unmute, because I, don't, I wanna hear everybody just giving Malia a big old clap and and thanking her for being on our show. So, Malia, we want to thank you very much. And everybody, um, I see Malia Cropper and, uh, um, yeah, Malia Cropper. Malia is after your name. Anyway, Malia, and I, have... I'm named after you. And Sifu Al is my godfather. And I've waited my whole life to meet you. Oh, where is it? That's wonderful. Oh, Cheryl, how are you doing, Cheryl? I'm great. I'm great. It's great to be here with you all. This is amazing. Wow. Thank you so much. All right. I know Cheryl, we have a great right interview. interview. Well, yeah, well you know what the thing is, you. right? What yes, you guys have we... heard between Malia and I is just the tip of an iceberg. And um, there's so many deep stories because life is full of chapters and there's a lot of things people can learn. So I'd like to make sure that, Sonny, you let everybody know about our program and also to unmute so that everybody can come up with a good old farewell clap to Malia. Farewell? You mean you're not going no. to see me again? I mean, no, 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 no. I'm just talking about this. Farewell. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
Hey, listen, guys, before you guys all uh, I'll go. Bye, Al. Go. Thank you, Al. Bye, Sonny. Wait a whole oh, second. Bye, Bye, before oh, before oh, I let oh, Bye, Christian. Bye, Ron. Bye, <laughs> Dim Sub, Ron. <laughs> before I let oh, anybody I go. I see there's a Malia here. How cool. She's got my name. I love all it. Right. She must be a hot right. item. <laughs> <laughs> before, there's my son, Craig. I love you, Craig. Oh, oh every single one of you guys, I love dearly, and I thank you. Where's is that shock? Yeah. Where's my Canadian? Oh, hi. Where's Nada? Where's my Nada? Washing her Arabic soaps. Nada's out walking her seven miles. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Hoga. The hi, Hoga. I love you, my Hoagie Bear. Uh, I'm oh, the, um... some of your names aren't coming through. I can't see your name. Reiner! There's my Reiner! Here I, I am! Where are you? Hi, Reiner! Oh, I'm so... You have the most beautiful children. You grew up to be an amazing father. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you for listening. I know it's late in Spain. Yeah. Now you, you can go to... It's okay. You both are all in my heart. Uh, and, and <laughs> Yamil, I love you so much, Yamil, and thank you. And where is Helma? Where's my Helma? There's my Helma. Hi, Helma. I love you. you. I miss you. Is everything Alina. standing strong? Everything good? Good. I love you guys. Emmanuel, Alina. wake up. You look like you're taking a snooze. No, <laughs> I'm still awake listening to everybody. Hi. I want to thank you so much for allowing me to do your interview. It is an amazing interview and it's being viewed by many and liked. Thank you so much. I have to do interviews with a few of you on here. Ron Lou, thank you so much for letting me interview you. That was an amazing interview. Al, your turn is coming next. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to interview you. I've got a hot agenda to ask you about. You're, you're going to be on Road to the Top. For those of you that don't know it, watch Road to the Top. It's All right, we will. Show. Road to right. the Top. Al, you're not uh, even watching my show. What's hello, wrong? Hello, Louie Louie. <laughs> All right. Hey, Howard, how are you doing? Uh, great. 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 Things are great. Hey, guys. Uh, before we let you guys go, I hope you hear this. That next week, Saturday, we have Sipu Jan Tidgar, Grandmaster Jan Tidgar from Hamburg, Germany. He was the first president after I left and, and Malia left to, to take care of the, uh, the WHKD uh, organization in Europe. And I have a lot of great things to say about him because uh, he, he's kept it together to thick and thin. So, Sonny, you go ahead and uh, end it. Are you I'm, there, Sonny? Yes, I'm here, Sifu. Okay, go so ahead. If anything, I'm muting everybody. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining in. Uh, really appreciate it. Sipuel appreciates it. Malia appreciates it. Uh, again, just to remind you guys that Sipuel has his book uh, on Amazon available. It's called Legacy. Make sure you check it out. If you haven't read it yet, I would highly recommend it. And then also, I would recommend that you go check out his uh, website, the CoscosMartialArts.com, where he's got his uh, video sets that he, that's out 
but at the same time, pretty soon, he, he will have his DTS program up and running where he's gonna be teaching some new cool things. So I would highly recommend that. If you have any other questions, feel free to message myself or Sifu Wow directly. And also, if you're watching the replay on YouTube, make sure you like it. Okay, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon wherever it is to remind you every time he puts out a new video because he will be posting some uh, teaching ones on his YouTube channel as well. So again, thank you very much. Everybody have yourself a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, great night. Aloha.